I wanted to get you guys to ponder this slide before we got started. The idea that nothing will work, including these science-based techniques that I shared with you last week, none of them will work unless you do. So the reality is you can have the perfect plan, the perfect idea for how you're going to learn something, learn how to do something, et cetera. But if you can't make time for it and you can't prioritize for that, it's never going to happen. Today we're going to talk about the enemies of learning. I forgot to turn this on. So I'm not going to do these in this order, just so you know, but this is the order in my opinion and if you look at most of the research. So enemy number one is procrastination. So you can have the perfect idea, but if you never actually get to it, it won't matter. Enemy two is distraction because now you've gotten to the task at hand, but you're busy checking social media, staring out the window, wondering what else is going on in life. So you're not actually focusing on the task at hand. So they're by far the two biggest ones, procrastination and distraction. Enemy three is lack of sleep. I'll only spend a few minutes on that because I did an entire presentation on that last year. Critically important. Uh, if you want that information, I know you can reach out to the lifelong earners and you can get a video, a uh, copy of the video of me giving that talk last week. So I'm just going to barely touch that subject today. Lack of exercise. We'll talk about exercise. I like to call it brain compost or brain fuel. Enemy five is stress which is really the anti-exercise, is how I like to describe it. And then lastly, enemy six is time management. So how do we use the time that we have wisely? So I'm not going to go in this order because a couple of them are going to take a lot more time than others. So I'm actually going to jump in with the ones I can cover quickly. So that's why I'm not actually covering them in this order. So we'll start with sleep. Now sleep is a massive topic. I spent, uh, we spent an hour and a half talking about it last year in my talk, The Tired Brain. But for now, I just want you to understand that when you're tired, you can't do anything as well, including learning, including recalling what you're learning. When you're at night, when you're sleeping, your brain does two primary things. It clears your brain of toxins. So what actually happens is your brain cells shrink while you're sleeping, and that allows the toxins between them to be flushed out. So when you sleep, your brain is detoxifying your brain. But I also like to say that you're cleaning up ideas because sleep is the perfect example of the three B's we mentioned last time. The fact that you need to be, you need to focus a mile deep on topics at some times. You need to focus really hard and concentrate. But you need to step back and look at things a mile wide sometimes too. And that's when you allow your subconscious brain to make sense of things. You've all heard of the idea of sleeping on it. We you know if you, just, if you just kind of, you're taking a walk and all of a sudden you get a really good idea or you let a couple days pass and something pops into your head, that's the power of your subconscious mind to work. Now the best time for that to happen is when you're sleeping. So while you're sleeping, you're cleaning up toxins, but also cleaning up ideas. You make sense of things. If I'm just beating my head against the wall on a topic, I just stop. And I go take a walk if it's during the day, or I go to sleep if it's at night. So we call that the three B's mode, well, bed, bath, and bus. Just the, when things pop into your head when you least expect it, that's because your subconscious mind is working. So this, if, you're, if you play video games, you'll get my analogy, but I have a loading screen on here on purpose because I used to be a gamer, and it, you, you're always told, don't turn off this device while it's saving, while it's loading. So when you're sleeping, that's exactly what happens. Your brain takes all the information you learned today, and if you're, if you're using computer terms, it's in like a temporary internet folder or something like that. While you're sleeping, it's going to look at all this information and decide, should it go into my hard drive or go into the trash? This is the process of memory consolidation that occurs when you sleep. That's why you need lots of nights of sleep be between learning information and having to recall it. But if you turn your brain off early, this process is going to be incomplete. So I, I was playing a video game years ago when I was single and didn't have children, because now there's definitely no time for this. But I played a game for two hours, and I didn't save it. And I remember my parents showed up, so I turned off the device, and I just lost two hours. So I, that's a very powerful analogy, because that's what happens if you spend all day learning a new skill, and then you have a poor night's sleep, you're going to lose hours worth of material that you spent taking in, because it's not going to be consolidated. So I lost two hours of my life that, I ne that I'll never get back. And to be honest, I never played that game again because I sat down to play it and realized I don't want to do the same two hours over. Well, imagine what a student's going through, spending all this time learning something, having a poor night's sleep, that information's not going to be stored, and they have to start back at square one. Was it Sisyphus rolling the, ball, rolling the boulder back up the hill and just rolls back down? So you're literally losing the time you spent storing information if you don't, you know, learning information if you don't store it. So that's, that's why this idea, don't turn 
your brain, don't reset your brain when it's busy consolidating information. Sleep, very, very important. I'm not doing it justice here because I, I talked about it for an hour last year. Next is exercise. So I've, I've scoured the literature for the you know, neuroscience information about how the brain works and how you can make it work better. And if you weigh all the evidence, the number one thing you can do to improve both short and long-term brain function is exercise. So exercise is both short-term and long-term, it's exercise. So it expands your working memory. Your working memory is the short-term memory, the bits of information you can keep that are gonna stay in that short-term memory until they're turned into long-term memories. That's number one. Exercise makes the brain cells you already have healthier. So those are two great things, but the number one benefit of exercise for, for the brain and for learning is the fact that exercise leads to the growth of new brain cells. Remember last week we talked about the fact that your brain is plastic and it changes, your brain's gonna be different tomorrow than it is today. That's like the greatest new, news ever. If, if you can't do something, the key is you can't do it right now. You can't do it yet because your brain can change and you can improve over time. Exercise is going to fuel this process better than anything else. So that's rule number one, is if you're exercising, you're going to have more new brain cells. So I call it brain compost. Some people call it brain miracle grow. And that's because exercise leads to an increase, it doesn't matter if you know this term, but it leads to an increase of brain-derived neurotrophic factor. I'm not gonna quiz you on that, but that is this, the growth signal that leads to the production of new brain cells. So if you're exercising, you're going to be building new brain cells. Most importantly to me as a teacher is the fact that many of these new brain cells are gonna be in a part of the brain called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is where memories are consolidated, where short-term memories become long-term memories. So that's awesome. If you're trying to learn anything, exercise is the key to building the new brain cells. But like other brain, brain cells, they're only useful if you use them. So exercise will lead to more brain cells, but you will not keep them unless you use them. So exercise plus a learning environment, I don't have to tell you guys that, you're, you're the lifelong learners, right? But exercise plus an environment where you're taking in new information and learning new things will lead to a better brain. So exercise on its own will certainly keep your brain healthy, but you have to be in a stimulating environment or those brain cells are gonna be weeded out. The term they use is actually pruning, I find that just amazing, like my son is building more, more new synapses than me. My son is building more new brain cells than me. But what makes, what turns a glob of goo, an infant, into a toddler, into a, into a child, into an adult, is actually the pruning away of the nerves we don't need. So you actually focus on the ones that you use. So if you don't use these new nerve cells, they're, just, they're gonna be pruned away. So exercise plus a stimulating environment will lead to a healthier brain. The other benefits of exercise, it's a great form of stress reduction, and also it puts you in our three Bs mode. Remember, bed, bath, bus, where your subconscious mind can go to work on the things that you're thinking about. So those are the reasons that you want to exercise. So sleep and exercise, or lack of sleep and lack of exercise, are the first two enemies of learning. The next one is stress. Stress, I call it anti-exercise, because all the things that exercise does, stress will counteract. Exercise leads to healthier brain cells. Stress weakens the brain cells you have. Exercise leads to an increase in the number of new brain cells. Stress will actually get rid of brain cells. Exercise makes your hippocampus healthier and larger where you, where you store information. Stress makes it smaller. It actually will shrivel up. So uh, the best way to think of this from a stress standpoint is when you're stressed, your body thinks that you're either trying to get food or trying to become food or not become food, you know he wants to become food, right? So I always like to say stress is the three minutes of screaming where either it's over or you're over. So from a stress standpoint, your body sees all stressors as emergencies. The problem is what stresses us out today is not that. Like I'm not at risk of a bear eating me today, but I'm worried about whether it's mental stuff, emotional stuff, financial stuff, doesn't matter. But when your body senses stress, it triggers these fight, flight, and freeze responses and the last thing it cares about is why would I worry about recalling this abstract bit of information? Why would I worry about storing some information I might need in the future? I'm trying not to die, right? So you can see that. So stress puts us in a situation where the last thing we care about is learning new information, 
or retrieving old information. It's how am I going to keep me alive through this, through this emergency. So that's why stress is going to be a major problem. So super easy, right? Just sleep a whole bunch more, exercise, and don't stress about things. You know, these, 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 the solutions are not easy. I'm just trying to point out the problems.